Okay, bye. Where are you going? Doing a garden tour. Thanks. Hi guys. Today is October 2nd of 2019 and it officially feels like fall. One thing, my eyelashes are growing back after losing them. Um, so that's nice. Let's start over here. It's the first day that it feels like fall. Like we had a couple of cold days um, last week and it even rained, but I don't know how to explain it. It just feels like fall. Like the only thing that would make it feel more like fall if I was growing pumpkins and I'm not, so. So the garden is kind of winding down. We have a couple things going in for fall. I have peas started already. I have beets and carrots and broccoli and all that good stuff, but for the most part, the garden is um, winding down for fall. Our first frost date is uh, supposed to be October 31st, so Halloween, um, and that's when all of the warm weather things like tomatoes and squash and stuff like that will die. I do want to show you guys this because this is the first time I've grown, well, anything, but this is the first time I've ever had flowers. Look at that. This is sunflower. I've never seen this. It's called a teddy bear sunflower. I got the seeds from Baker Creek. Um, they sell heirlooms. Oops. Don't know how that got there. Dead lots of stuff is winding down because it's gotten cold and lots of things have gotten sick um, like this emerald gem melon. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it, but I figured it's not going to be alive too much longer anyways because of the frost, so I'm just letting it do its thing. It still has some fruit on it, like that, and that. On the other side of this trellis, cucumbers have all but died. They got affected by some bugs and didn't do too well, but still have a couple on there. This was the Moon and Stars melon. That's kind of suffered in the cold too. There's still two melons on there. I'm letting them ripen. This is my baby pool filled with strawberries. It's actually doing fine. Um, it's still producing lots of fruit. Yeah, it's awesome. This is the in-ground part of the garden. Here I planted kale and beets and radishes and peas, a couple ground cherries and some carrots. So this is Ragged Jack kale. I haven't thinned it. Um, I bet it would do better if I thinned it. I've never grown kale before, so I'm just gonna see how it does. These are radishes. I planted them when they were still pretty hot, so they didn't form like a good root. These are more radishes. Um, this is a ground cherry. I have one. <laughs> I'm really hoping I get to try one. Oh, there's a couple more. Look at that. I'm really hoping I get to try one or more before the frost comes and kills it. This is um, in the tam tomatillo family, so it's not frost hardy at all. It will die when the frost comes on October 31st or near that. This is lettuce. This is flashy trout back lettuce. Um, this is just pretty poor soil, so um, I didn't expect it to do that well, but we are getting some leaves, which is awesome. This is the first bed. That's the second bed. This bed we have a big trellis with the melons. In the second bed we have a big trellis. Here's the side of the trellis with the peas. There's also nasturtium here. Um, I read that 
if you plant them in fall you will get a winter bloom if you live in a mild climate which i do we don't get snow really um i think i'm zone 9a i don't really know though i'm in california something's eating this nasturtium it's interesting more peas i kind of planted peas everywhere just so when things like the melons and um, things like that die, we'll have peas coming right up behind it. Got another sunflower here. Oh, they're just amazing. I love it. These get a little bigger, but I planted them late. These are rattlesnake and purple pole beans. These are the purple ones. And these are the rattlesnake ones. They are patterned. They kind of look like a rattlesnake. I've had a couple that get more um, pigmentation when they get bigger and when they are in the sun more. I've had some purple ones that aren't even purple. See like this one? It's not even purple, but then others are completely dark. A really dark, dark purple. So that's been interesting. But these, these are all up on this trellis and they go from this trellis down. They've climbed all the way from that side. That's where they're planted and they've climbed up this and completely taken over and are almost to the ground over here. It's interesting because they've made it all the way down but then they decided to start going back up towards the light again. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, just below the, uh, the pole beans we have the eggplant still going strong. I've gotten like, I have to say like 20 eggplants off here, maybe 30. Um, and then these, these will make it 40. <laughs> I have to say with all the little ones that are still producing, this was such a healthy plant the whole entire time. Never had any issues. It was really late to flower um, I think it wasn't getting enough water because I was just watering it as much as um, the rest of the garden and then I read that eggplants really need a lot of water just to flower so I started it started giving it some TLC and really babying it and it's flourishing it's almost as tall as me it's ridiculous oh here's like I was saying that is how pigmented they can get so interesting. Right next to the eggplant, we have baby tomato plant. Um, those won't do anything before the frost comes and kills it, but I like having it there anyways. These are peas right next to it. Snap peas, these are peas making their way. This is okra. Um, I was gone for three days. I went to the Mendocino coast and I came back to okra. That was like huge. I mean, huge. And um, it's interesting because Clemson spineless still stays soft and edible, even though they get large. So I thought that was really interesting. Came back and I could still eat that huge pod. Other okras, they get like much bigger than this. They get like this big and they get hard and tough and almost inedible. This will die with the frost too, but I love okra. So I didn't pull it out and put anything in because I just, I wanted to get those last few pieces of okra before it died. Okra is actually really good for your digestive system. It has this stuff in it called mucilage, which is actually, or mucilage, I think. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's good for your digestive system and it's similar to the stuff that is in aloe um, and with everything with going through chemo and um, having really horrible um, issues with digestion and keeping things down and um, all the damage that was done from being sick for nearly six months um, I've been t eating almost um, a pound of okra a week because I get okra from um, like a co-op. If you buy in bulk, they give you 
um, a discount. So I've been eating okra every week and I love it. I love okra. I would eat it without the health benefits, but um, it's really been helping. I think with me recovering and just lots of veggies, um, but okra especially because of the, the health factors that come from it. So good fact to know. Moving on, we have another eggplant. This plant, let me let me try and get the view. You can't really tell, but that, this, 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 that is one plant. And I got it as a start. I didn't get to start anything from seed this year because it's my first year gardening and I just didn't feel confident. But this is one. So this is the Rosa Bianca eggplant. It's an heirloom variety, so it has this really neat violet or lavender blushing. Um, they start out white. I don't know if you've ever seen Rosa Bianca eggplant, but they start out this like cream color, like that, and then as they get older, they develop like a purple, coloring purple blushing and the ones that are in the sun more develop more purple than any of the other ones um, there was one that was under here that was completely white all white no purple at all um, and it was completely in the shade and then the ones that get sun um, even from such a small um, size they get lots of sun, so that produces that purple coloring. This plant, I have to say, this plant is runner up to my other eggplant over there. Um, not as much fruit, and I missed a couple because they're better to harvest younger. Once they get large, they turn yellow, which is a sign of overripeness, so um, I missed a couple, but these, this is just so prolific and I am definitely going to grow this again just because of how be beautiful it is. I don't know if you guys have ever tried the rattlesnake or purple pole beans, but I encourage you to. They are the best bean I've ever eaten. I don't know what it is, if I'm just watering it differently or if it's the climate where we are. Um, here in California, but they are just the juiciest things. So full of water. So flavorful. Sometimes beans can get like like a bitter kind of aftertaste, but this just completely smooth tasting. I don't know. If you're thinking, oh, what should I do? this year for a garden or if you're adventurous. These are not only fun to grow, beautiful to grow, but they taste awesome. I don't know, I haven't grown very many beans, so I can't say that they're the best bean ever because I don't know. Um, but I grew some Green Lake, I think that's what it's called. Blue Lake or Green Lake, uh, the, the green beans. I uh, grew those this year and they were good, but not this good. So, yeah, if you're looking to grow a green bean, that's beautiful. Moving on to the second bed here. Bed I've had some issues with. I don't know why. The other bed has been fine, but this one we've had a gopher eat my lemon cucumber and my squash plant, my yellow crooked net squash. So that was sad. I cried. Um, we've also had major like bug issues just in bit in this bed though. Um, I'm not 100% sure why they chose this bed versus the bed that's literally one foot um, away. But this bed has had some issues. Just recently I planted some um, Thai basil. It smells awesome. It smells 
almost like licorice-y. I recommend growing this. It hasn't gotten that big, but it's been a little bit cold, um, and I don't know that much about Thai basil, so I think it just needs a second to get adapted. I planted this right after the Heirloom Expo in Santa Rosa. I got those there. I also got this kohlrabi. Kohlrabi I spoke about in the last garden tour, um, how they were from spring. The guy wasn't sure that they were going to do much, and to be honest, they really haven't. They haven't done much, and I think it's because they were stunted in growth, but this little guy has a little bit of new growth, but yeah, that was just interesting. Who knows? I've never grown it before, so that was just interesting. This is a Carmen pepper. This is the only pepper that it has set. Um, there's one over here. Okay, so it's set two. But this is the only pepper that I've seen get this big on this plant this whole year. And I planted this spring, so I'd say like May or June. Um, and this is the only pepper that it's set. Right next to the strawberries, we have carrots. Um, I had just a carrot mix, so that's what this is. We will see when um, they get bigger what colors they are. They were different colors. Um, I planted some of the ox heart carrots. Uh, they get like a pound each, depending. Um, I planted some of those, but they haven't come up yet. So we're just gonna see um, about those. Right next to that is another nasturtium. I have nasturtium everywhere. Right next to that is a more ragged jack kale and some more carrots. Right next to that is my tomato plant. Um, I planted these really late. Probably not going to get anything off it. In fact, that's the first flower that it is set and I don't think we're going to get much. I think it's interesting though because these are slicers. Um, I don't want to say the variety because it could be wrong, nothing's marked, but the flowers are so much bigger than the cherry tomatoes that I had growing earlier. So that's interesting. Underneath the tomato we have um, radishes. That is a big boa. And I did the garden party radish mix, so we have, that's a white radish. And that's kind of a purple radish, a red radish, and that's an orange. So that's kind of fun. This is a butterfly tree. I didn't know they get like huge. I thought it was like a bush, but that's a tree in the middle of my garden bed. So I have to move that eventually. That is my basil. That is purple basil. And I've kind of let it flower. You're supposed to pinch these off. Um, otherwise it will die and go to seed. Um, I'm not sure how much more that it's going to produce anyways because we have about a month until the frost, but I need to get out here and pick these flowers. I've cut that basil down to nothing, twice. And I've left like a couple leaves every time. Um, and each time it's grown that big. Now you want to pick the flowers off because once it starts setting flowers it's going to put all of its energy into the seed um, which is in the flowers so that it can die and be grown next year kind of like reseeding itself so the leaves will taste bitter by then so you want to pick the flowers off and keep it sweet tasting but honestly my plant has a couple flowers on it and I think it tastes all right either way these are my last surviving tomatoes these are the chocolate sprinkle cherry tomatoes that I cloned from the mother plant plant that I had earlier in the year. The mother plants have died from disease and these guys got pretty cold the last couple of days and they I think are on their way out. I have to say this is the best cherry tomato that I've grown. So this is one meaty little cherry tomato, um, thick walled, not so much juice and it tastes 
but cherry tomatoes sometimes taste like sweeter um, or different but this tastes just like a big slicer um, just miniature so this is my favorite cherry tomato that I've grown yet Sun Golds loved them super prolific but they were too sweet for me when they got warm from the Sun so sweet and I mean like super sweet a couple things here before um, we head in because I am losing light and there's honestly not that much going on in the garden right now so all of these are peas I believe these are green arrow peas um, but I don't know because there's they're not labeled um, these will only get 18 inches tall, so they don't need any sort of staking. That's what the box said. Don't know if I believe that. So I do have like stakes at the ready, <laughs> just in case they need to be staked. But I planted them all over the place. I mean, really, these will get bigger and climb up that trellis. But the ones here that I planted coming up, I mean, I just, I really went ham with the peas. And um, we're gonna have a lot of peas. That's really all for the garden right now. Um, I'm new to YouTube, so I missed the peak garden season. Um, so we are starting videos while it's winding down, which kind of sucks. But next year I will be doing more videos because I love gardening. And I also want to share my experience with cancer, beating cancer going through chemo and interacting with nurses and doctors and um, it's scary putting yourself like out there like that. Um, I really wanted to share a lot of what was happening for me on Facebook, um, which has been great, but I really want to get like a couple videos out there. Yeah, so like this video, share and subscribe. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram, lilymaka21 and